Welcome to Table Talk and thank you for joining us today. Our first guest on the show is Hansel Moore and he is joined with Ed Bray to talk about all the great things going on with the American Legion. Um, Hansel, you're with the Spencer uh, American Legion post and Ed, we'll get to your part of, of your affiliation <laughs> with that post and everything. Glad to have you back, Hansel. We are always glad to come down here and I'd, li I'd like to thank you for giving us the opportunity. Well, tell us about <clears throat> all the great things. You guys are so busy. I looked on your Facebook page and it was like boom, 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 all kinds of stuff going on. Um, so what all have you been active with this? Fall. Well, I'm I'm very proud to say we were a very active post. <clears throat> um, I'm the commander of Post 207 in Spencer, and uh, we've been busy in, in the last six months to a year. Um, we've had a, a number of programs. Uh, we've got uh, things that are coming up. Uh, I'll go through a little bit more um, the pillars here yeah. and kind of fill in. Um, you know, again, thanks for the opportunity to talk about the American Legion. Um, and for those who don't, who don't know what the American Legion is, it, it, I had somebody about two weeks ago ask me, what does the American Legion do? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I guess I was kind of uh, questioning that. I'm thinking, wow, uh, I just kind of figured everybody knew. Um, but the American Legion was uh, formed right after World War I, so we've been around uh, over 100 years now, I think we're at 103 years. And uh, we are based on four pillars. And it's been the same four pillars for um, over 100 years. Uh, the first one is um, national defense. And what that entails is we support um, our active duty military. Mm -hmm. um, we've all gone through basic training, we've all served. Um, and we support through a number of programs, the active duty military and their families. Uh, nationwide, there's a lot of programs to uh, uh, support the families as well. Uh, under Americanism, uh, or under national defense, we also support local law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, this is a time where, you know, law enforcement's under so much uh, scrutiny or so much uh, um, negativity uh, we did, we continue to support law enforcement because we we believe that they are a strong part of the community, uh, as well as our first responders and 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 uh, the fire departments. Um, those are two uh, groups that we support wholeheartedly with the American Legion. <clears throat> um, Americanism. Um, we support and defend the Constitution of the United States as veterans. Uh, we all stood up and took the oath to support and defend the Constitution, and that never ends. Uh, we, we believe that our country was founded uh, with uh, standards and, and through the Constitution, and uh, we do everything that we can through education programs and whatnot um, to help educate the community um, on the Constitution of the United States. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh -huh. um, Veterans Affairs, obviously, we're uh, one of the largest veterans organizations um, throughout, the, throughout the world, actually. Um, right here in Tennessee, we have about 170 uh, individual posts, um, and we do support veterans through a number of reasons. Uh, on the local level, we provide veterans in need if they need housing, clothing, um, food, um, and the biggest thing that I, I think that the American Legion has as an asset is we provide an opportunity for socialization. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Veterans, for those who have um, served, it's a unique um, community. And not all veterans are able to socialize in, in 
you know, typical community events or whatever, um, where, again, we've all walked the same walk. We've, we have shared a lot of the same experiences and it's a, it's a unique opportunity for, for veterans to come and socialize. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that may sound very simple, but <clears throat> particularly in the rural communities, um, Tennessee, obviously, we have, we still have a lot of rural area, and veterans like that independence and ruralness, but there's not a lot of opportunities for them to come together. Mm -hmm. So particularly with <clears throat> the smaller posts, it's a unique opportunity. And, um, you know, th th there are veterans out there and, and it's sad to say one of the things that really keeps me going and, and, and has kept me as part of the American Legion is right now our uh, motto with one of our mottos within, within the American Legion is be the one. And there are so many veterans out there from, you know, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, all of, you know, Afghanistan, all the way through. Um, if they have too much time and, and and not enough socialization, negative thoughts start to occur. Mm -hmm. And we want to be the one to prevent them from taking their lives. Right now, the statistics are still about 22 veterans a day. And um, <clears throat> so we as the American Legion have a number of programs. We, we participate in a number of programs, resources, and sometimes it's just to be that voice. Mm -hmm. Hey, somebody's out here, and, and if you need something, you give right. me a call. Got a brother okay. or sister that you can, can lean on. And th that really is what keeps me going. I mean, if, if I have a question or I have a concern, regardless of what it is, I know I can pick up the phone and talk to Ed and say, hey, I'm, I need to bounce this off of you. <clears throat> you know, what are your thoughts? Um, so that's one of the very unique things that our organization uh offers veterans um i know a big part of it i'll interject there no is that's your okay youth programs <laughs> that's, that you've that, got. that's where i'm going that's next where, you know you've got a lot of things coming up that involves youth and that you've accomplished i guess over the past month or so working with the boy scouts in spencer i am very happy to say that the youth is is our last pillar mm -hmm. uh, of the four pillars and uh, I'm very happy to say that we, um, at our building, we were fortunate enough to be one of the posts that does have a building. And uh, we <clears throat> host um, the Cub Scouts. Okay. There is a long history. Um, it's, it's pretty close to 100 years as well between the Boy Scouts and the American Legion as well. And again, our, our missions are very much the same as far as promoting Americanism as a part of being a part of the community. And so there, it's become a very, very quickly, it's become an active uh, um, Cub Scout post up there. And um, one of the things that uh, I just smile, uh, we had a flag retirement ceremony and that, and that goes under Americanism um, that uh, when a, when a flag has served its purpose, gets tattered, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, um, there is a ceremony to honor the service of that flag. And um, we just had one last week, and we had a number of people from the community, including the Cub Scouts and the Civil Air Patrol, to come and be a part of that. And we retired over 20 flags. Um, and most, alert, most American legions, if you have a flag that needs to be retired rather than just throw it away uh, to us, that's very disrespectful. Uh, we will take it and we will secure it and we will um, retire it with dignity. Um, so um, we do have a, a Cub Scout unit that meets on Monday nights at uh, our, our post. And then we also have what's called the Civil Air Patrol. And that's for a little bit older, those are usually the high school kids. And um, they, again, their mission is very similar to ours. Um, and that, that could be a whole nother, nother program and maybe we'll have them come down and talk to you um, because I'm actually pretty amazed by what they do. Um, again, they teach flag etiquette, they teach, um, one of the things that they, they 
do that I thought was pretty uh, interesting, or, or I do think is pretty interesting, is they do participate if there's a uh, communication outage, you know, whether it be natural disaster or whatever, they are actually an auxiliary of the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And they have a communications trailer and they can help um, keep lines of communication between active military bases. And it's the older kids it's, or older students. That I believe help they have to that. be 12 or 13 years old to be a part of that. Okay. But it is really it, and and their their group is growing as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it, if anybody's interested in that, they can look up uh, Civil Air Patrol, and uh, you can uh, learn. Uh, all about their programs. Talk to us too about the contest coming up. You said uh, the oratorical contest coming up. That's a pretty big opportunity to win quite a few scholarships for school. It is a huge program. Um, it's been around since I believe it was 1938 they started doing this. And all of this kind of ties in if you, you kind of mm -hmm. see it. Um, the oratorical program is for high school kids. Uh, or high school students, um, and what the requirement is that they write a five to five to eight minute speech based on the Constitution of the United States. And I remember the first time I went to this, I don't know, four or five years ago, uh, and it was amazing to watch these 16, 17 year old uh, students get up there and you can just tell how much time and preparation they they put into this for a for their speech but just to hear that generation um and their respect for the history of the constitution their you know what does it mean to them that that type of thing um now what we do here we're, we're collecting now for people that want to be a part of this. Uh -huh. uh, and if you're a parent that has a child that's going to be going to college pretty soon, um, <clears throat> there's an opportunity for um, scholarships. Uh -huh. uh, just to let you know, there was a uh, young lady from East Tennessee last year who won it at, or she came in second place at the national level and she was awarded, I believe it was about $23,000 for, for uh, uh, her scholarship. And um, so right now, all of the Legion uh, uh, posts are looking for an individual to sponsor mm -hmm. to go to the local to the, level. Uh -huh, okay. It's going to go to the, it, 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 it's kind of, it's, uh -huh. it's a contest that goes from the local level uh -huh. to the regional level, uh -huh. to the state level. And then on to the national level, um, but j e even at the regional level, it, it's just a, like I said, it's amazing. Uh, whether you have a, a son or daughter that participates in it, if you and we'll try and get the word out there, um, our region or our district will be in Cookville mm -hmm. in January. Um, it's it's something to just come and 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 watch and be a part of it, mm -hmm. and we've got some great judges that uh, are are uh, going to give their expertise to the to the process. Um, but for anyone that's interested in that, I would encourage you to go to legion.org, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of get all of the information. There there's there's so much about it uh, because they pick uh, a number of uh, amendments. And their specific amendments. Um, now, one of the unique things is they do the five to seven minute speech, right, right. And then all of the contestants go to a room, mm -hmm. and then they come back and they have to pick from a hat. Oh, and they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. They're, they're, yeah. It's one of four amendments, uh -huh. and they have got five minutes to do a. Uh, it's a. I think it's a three minute speech, on that mm -hmm. particular amendment. Um, but it, it's just amazing, even even at the um, district level, the, the level of talent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would encourage anybody that has or knows of a student uh, in high school um, or high school age um, to look up Legion, legion.org, and it's under oratorical. It's just on the mm -hmm. left-hand side. So okay. that's a huge program. 
Well, let's jump over to this fascinating, like this very snazzy helmet sitting up here. And I think you are the one that kind of wears this from time to time. You are the driver for a race car that the American Legion several auxiliary posts are sponsoring. Is that right? Exactly. Um, I'm the owner, driver, crew chief, mechanic, you <laughs> name it. Um, washer. <laughs> yeah, washer, um, tire changer. But uh, yeah, I have um, I have like six posts from District 4 that, that actually sponsors, sponsors me with a race car. Um, I'm racing at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Did that towards the, to the end of this, sh this season and mm -hmm. the next next season i'm looking at three other tracks okay so, so i guess does that help just kind of promote the american legion like people at the race uh are like hey you know it's just bringing i guess attention to the american yes. legion and what all you do yeah i've got american legion all over the car so that sort of helps trying to get the younger veterans you know seeing that the american legion does you know they're involved in racing um and start asking questions. So mm -hmm. I've had a, I've had a few veterans that have come up in the pits, you know, asking about who sponsors us. Yeah. You know, yeah. On, on the back of the car, I've got it, all the posts that, that actually sponsor the car on the trailer. So going down the highway, everybody happens to see that too. So, so you're in Nashville uh, at the racetrack there, and I guess they could. Is that like through the Nashville Motor Speedway? They could. Uh, I guess see the schedule and when the yes. races are and that type thing. Yep. So next season will be, we be Nashville and then I'm looking at Huntsville, the Rim, which is north of Nashville, and uh, hopefully I can get more of the younger veterans interested. So I take it that, of course, you're a veteran and racing must have been in your blood even uh, during this time. What That's what got you interested, I guess, in I, having a car. My dad, dad raced when he was younger with, with his brother and then he got me into racing Enduros when I was younger. Um, then I he retired, I joined the military, so that put the racing on hold. Um, getting out, out of the military. I didn't get right back into it, but uh, I did eye racing there for six years. So, and that's what NASCAR did when the pandemic came, uh -huh. came around. Yeah. And then um, my dad wanted, wanted he and I to get into, into the legends, but then uh, things happened. He passed away, so I put that on hold. Uh -huh. So then my uncle, you know, happened to be with me one weekend and next thing you know I'm back into racing. So, <laughs> um, and then I, I was doing dirt at that time and Hansel and Skip Ritter happened to reach out to me and, and ask, you know, could the Legion sponsor the race car to try to get the word out that, you know, hey, the American Legion's here, we're here for the veterans. Um, we do a lot of stuff, including racing. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, you know, I know Hansel. Last time you were here, they had just had the big event in Nashville where they blocked the streets off, and the American Legion had a car that was in yeah. that race as well. The Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it was it was kind of funny because you know I'm always thinking about how how do we reach um, more veterans because you know I was thinking on the way down here, I your viewing area probably has. I'm going to estimate about 20,000 veterans. There's a lot of veterans in in Middle Tennessee, and and I was just how, how do we how do we reach you know because I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I it was 25 years after I got out of the military mm -hmm. before I joined a veterans organization. Yeah, right. Uh, because my preconceived notion or my experience with veterans organizations. Um, where they were a smoke-filled room with a bunch of veterans sitting around drinking, telling more <laughs> stories, right? <laughs> I mean, back in the 80s and 90s, and I'm like, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to waste my time with this. And then um, I, I happened to come across Harold Lowe, and you know Harold. Most people in McMinnville or the area know Harold. And he actually sat down and talked to me with a little bit, and he, he hooked me with a word uh, community. He said, that's what this is about. And, and I've been a member now six years and 
I've really seen that. And if you look, like I said, if you stop by and visit uh, uh, American Legion or you look on their their uh, Facebook or web page, that's what the American Legion is about. How do we give back to the community? I, I think it's in veterans DNA to yeah, serve. Mm-hmm. And that's, a, that's kind of our mantra is how, how do we serve the community? And the American Legion has given us so many tools and, and, and whatnot. Um, the sad truth is a lot of the, the veterans um, are, are, have aged, aged out, if you would. Um, some of the posts, uh, have members that are in their 70s 80s and even 90s and for an organization which i which i think the the legion is a fantastic organization and needs to to go on uh we do need to get these these uh next generations in um so i just happen to think uh, before before they even announced the uh, uh legion car the nascar uh, I was talking with Harold at breakfast, and I said, you know what, why don't we sponsor a, a race car? And then the next week, the Legion announced that they had a race car. So we well, didn't steal we, we didn't steal their idea, yeah. but this allows us to reach a, a local. Um, it, it's amazing when you, because he, he not only takes it to the track, but he'll bring it around to mm-hmm. events. Uh, we're, mm-hmm. we're talking about having an event with the Boy Scouts and the, and their racing. Veterans Day parades. Uh, we've got parades. Perfect, we've got yeah. and, and and it really is a magnet because it it it, it looks it's cool. It's flashy. That's it, right. It's, it looks uh-huh. cool and and it just gives us the opportunity to say, hey, this is the mission of uh, why we are who we are. And uh, so I, I I think the Legion's very fortunate. Because uh, I know this guy spends a lot, a lot of time on that car, yeah. and we get a lot of pictures, uh, <laughs> especially if there's a fender bender. Oh, uh, yeah. We've had a few of those in the last two years, and uh, we know it's not cheap, and, and so we are very blessed to to been able to make that connection. And, and Ed uh, is a great ambassador for the American Legion, and that's that's why I wanted you to meet him. I yeah, think I think yeah. he does a great job. Well, we're going to take a short break uh, with uh, our audience. We've got some other great people from the American Legion coming up and some other opportunities that they have to participate, help with fundraising and things like that. So we'll be right back with more Paper Talk. 